the at home show. Live from the Green Room Studios, from the spacious property of Bates Nursery and Garden Center, 3810 Whites Creek Pike, it's the At Home Show with Josh Carey and David Bates. Hey, welcome in everybody. It's Saturday morning. It means it's time for the At Home Show. Come down, Dag Nabbit. Okay, we got, we got business to do today. It's going to be gorgeous. going to have to get out. You're going to have to watch the At Home Show and then get it out in the yard. What a day it's going to be, David Bates. It is indeed, and we're grateful to have this wonderful day. And let's, uh, let's just proceed and uh, talk about this weather because mm-hmm. it's going to be a nice weekend. And then, uh, well, maybe not so much for the next several days thereafter. Today, of course, is Saturday, the 19th of February. The month is mm-hmm. sliding on by. A high of 46 degrees today and abundant sunshine. We're going to have beautiful sunny conditions, so it's a great day, as Josh said, to get out. And uh, whatever project you've got going on, be it uh, digging in the dirt or otherwise, Picking it's a up great the limbs, day for that. Sticks, trees. 24 for the overnight low, and tomorrow even more grand conditions, 62 degrees and mostly sunny. Few clouds are going to be rolling in in the afternoon because at that point the um, the sun deteriorates for the next several days and the amount of predicted precipitation greatly increases. Looks like perhaps a half <sighs> inch of rain Monday afternoon. So if you've got activities on Monday, you ought to try to get those done before uh, the mid part of the day. Tuesday, uh, a complete rain event, maybe as much as two inches of rain Hush. on Tuesday, mm-hmm. another half mm-hmm. inch on Wednesday in cloudy conditions because the uh, rain will be again in the afternoon hours and then on or early evening. And on Thursday, 60 degrees and another inch of rain. So, you know, it looks like quick math says it could be four inches of rain occurring this week. So we're the already damp conditions we have will Stay that way uh, until Friday, at least, and then we get uh, clouds Friday morning and sunshine moving back in in the afternoon. And next weekend, again, looks great. The encouraging part of the forecast for this time of year is that you see that the temperatures are slowly beginning to moderate. Mm -hmm. This time last year, by the way, is the week we had uh, intense ice and snow, so what a difference a year can make. Uh, that was clearly an aberration because uh, we don't typically get that kind of weather later in February, and there's nothing at this point that indicates it will continue this year. So we're looking forward to this transition towards springtime and to getting out and digging in the dirt. Yes, and he is, those what those bells that you heard behind David's uh, weather forecast, you know, that's the alarm. That's the one that tells you it is time to get up, get out, get your coffee, watch the at-home show, because it is a Saturday mm-hmm. morning tradition, mm-hmm. Tyler. Mm-hmm. It is David Bates. It most certainly is. Mm-hmm. Well, well, of course well, it is, Josh. We're we in our 25th sure that... year, David Bates. Yes, well, that's if you want to exaggerate slightly as far as... Now, you and I have Uh been broadcasting more than 25 years together, just not continuously. We had a a year and a half together when we first met, Uh and then we got canceled, and then we got... Norm got canceled. We didn't get canceled. Norm got canceled. Well, we were Uh attached to Norm, but anyway, fortunately, Chris Kulik saw... uh, something in us and it gave us the opportunity to come back and do the potential, show and folks. we did so yeah. on wtn for 18 years yeah. and then uh, on wsm for another three years and uh-huh. now the um the last couple right here at bates nursery from the green room and we've continued to kind of evolve our process mm-hmm. and uh, you know try to put forth some um information that's really useful for the gardeners that are out there and Once in a perhaps while. Yeah. tackle a few other projects along yeah. the way. We're able to do that through the uh, connectivity that we have through our social media. And uh, you, of course, mm-hmm. are in charge of the At Home Show Facebook page. The At Home Show with Josh Carey and David Bates. You can send questions there. You can also send them to our Instagram page of the same name, yes. The At Home Show with Josh Carey and David Bates. Also through our Bates Nursery Facebook and Instagram pages. Mm-hmm. Those are all uh, under the careful guidance 
of Caroline Gant. Good morning, Caroline, and good morning, Austin. Yes. Welcome you guys into the program. And the silent partner to uh, the screen left, of course, is Tyler Blankenship. He's the guy that makes all this happen, and we're appreciative <laughs> of his efforts, as always. Good My morning, mental all. capacities. Woo! <laughs> and we might mention that if uh, we if we happen to drop out, just take a break. <laughs> because we we we're we're having we've had some technical issues over a few weeks. Nothing big, but if it just drops out, just just sit back for a second, well, take a breath. We're coming back. There are, be, there are things that are beyond our control. And, yes, uh, our streaming like service it. that yeah. gives us this ability to be able to stream out. Uh, for whatever reason, they've got a little hiccup every now and then, and that's uh, <laughs> more like while a it's disconcerting for us, and <laughs> it does maybe make some. F- Four-letter words fly. It's not Tyler's fraud. It's yeah. not his fault. Not, not it's, not, it's not of his doing. So anyway, well, hopefully we get through this week and we have no snag. So anyway, again, good morning, uh, Austin and Caroline. Yes. And I'm. Uh, are there issues that we want to tackle before we get into the questions? Well, I don't know. Issues. There's a long pause. <laughs> we were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no issues on my end. I know. I don't no think. issues over here. Mm-hmm. Well, gotta, I'll touch briefly. Uh, oh, I'll touch briefly on what I wrote about in my newsletter this weekend, and um, that was, of course, February's gold. And I tried to talk about uh, gold flowering items that you see in the landscape right now that are, you know, some of the really certain signs that spring is on the way. And it's worth talking about for just a moment. I will, I, I will admit this. I, I made one. Uh, major gaffe on that this <gasps> week and then I talked about uh, witch hazels and we have at the same time almost completely sold out of them so for those who are looking um, uh, Julie is trying to get more and my apologies for talking something up that we mm-hmm. apparently don't have any of maybe only one or two so I'm, I'm sorry nah, nah, about nah, nah, nah. talking about those but also uh-huh. talk about uh, some of the uh, attributes of witch hazel and uh, why people would want to have that in their landscape well it's just first off it's just different it's something that yep tyler's holding up another one we brought in that, that you mentioned we'll get to that in a second but yeah uh witch hazel it's nice that that it blooms this time of year it's just not hardly a ton of trees that that do that so um, it's, it's just different. It's kind of got a funky habit to it. It's a little bit uh, shrubby when it's young and then it'll end up taking that shape of more of a tree as it ages, uh, does really well up North does really well here too. Josh, you have one, don't you? It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely. Is it blooming yet? No. Not yet. Now mine actually tends to bloom a little bit more orange than yellow. It's mm-hmm. actually a lot deeper orange than a true yellow, like this Carolina Jasmine here. Mm-hmm. But, Yours but is the Diana cultivar. The witch hazel Diana. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. You it's call a, it Diana for yeah. obvious reasons. That's your wife's name, but it actually is Diana. She in case one. you're asking for it. Yeah, <laughs> this is that she. There was that's the second one because she killed the first one, so we have to call it Diana. And how big is yours getting? Oh, every year I trim it back, uh, probably to start out at a three and a half feet, and last year it was easily eight at the peak. Really, I mean, it, it's a growing machine. She's in a real happy spot. That's cool. Why do you and, trim it? Uh, for uh, reasons that the project <laughs> manager tells us to do, okay, it, 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 it's in a pathway. I'll have to take a, I'll take a picture next week and see if we get some blooms because I think it's you it's could just transplant about, it, Josh. I don't think so. No, no, no. I it's like too it heavy. Where, it's where it's at, but uh, I actually have a picture. I saw it this morning. I'll put it up on the Facebook page here in a minute. But it's in a pathway, so it and it's right beside the outdoor living area. By the way, the concrete patio where the grill is, mm-hmm. um, and right. it tends to get a little bushy, and, and it it's just gorgeous. I love the way she's shaped, though. But, mm-hmm. but a growing machine every year. So yeah, it's probably just a, a response from that trim. Yep. Yeah, just yeah, bust back out. And I guess while we're while we're here, Tyler, Tyler, show show what that plant you got. That, okay. Oh, Carolina <laughs> jessamine right. in full bloom. We keep ours in the greenhouse, um, so. Yours They're around town are probably just budded or maybe just starting to bloom, but ours are in pretty well full show right now. I brought them in because David mentioned this in his newsletter as well, which is an excellent almost evergreen vine mm-hmm. um, that can climb a, a good ways. I mean, it can get almost <laughs> indefinitely big, um, but this time of year it blooms um, a little bit later, probably within the next couple, two or three weeks, you'll start seeing them actually blooming at your house. Um, but excellent 
vine that blooms yellow, the first sign of spring, and it smells fantastic. Yes. If you ever get mm. get out of here, put your nose in one of those mm-hmm. blooms, and you will be pleasantly surprised. Better than honeysuckle, in my of, opinion. Those are one of the plants that actually has, uh, due to climactic warming, those actually fare much better here than they did, say, 30, 40 years ago when they would routinely f- freeze back severely or out uh, every few years. So now they don't really ever seem to have those issues because we're, we just are not getting so cold in the winter. Mm-hmm. And David, there's a rumor. I got to know this. I've been meaning to ask you this for a long time. Something about oh. Monrovia coming out with a cultivar called Double Shot. Did you have something to do with that? Uh, I actually did, and that was um, my contribution. It was that you know there is the swamp jasmine, which also is yellow flowering, mm. and there is of course what we just talked about the uh, the other jasmine, the Carolina jasmine. Well, if you plant those two together, what you get are uh, a plant that will flower twice a year. And I I suggested they should do that, and that they should call it double shot and. Voila. And, you know, <laughs> that suggestion happened, uh, I'm going to say, about 15 years ago. So they haven't, you know, reacted, overreacted. They did actually have them in production for a while. Perhaps they have come back. But uh, I get no royalty from that uh, name. Uh, just uh, a suggestion that I passed along freely. So anyway, if you get a double shot, you will, in fact, get it flowering twice a year. And the, the two are, the foliage is almost identical very difficult to even tell them apart at all so it does create a good opportunity to have a a double flowering jasmine in your landscape yeah and it looks just like the same vine like you were just saying i mean you put two different plugs in the same pot and it's a vine that's going to grow up but they both look the same it looks like one plant but you just get that extended bloom period so that was a good one and we still sell it every every now and then a a blind squirrel can find a nut so (laughs) There's that. Mm-hmm. There you go. So, good morning, Caroline. How are you today? Good morning. I'm doing great. Wide awake. So, you know. Well, are you ready for uh, to put questions to us and see if we've got an answer? I'm ready, but are you guys? We're ready. Okay. Oh. Here we go. First one. Starting a greenhouse. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> Starting a greenhouse. That's it. Starting a, that's yeah. it? That's all you got? Uh, what do you have to say to that? Sounds I think like it's Josh a great idea talk. if you can. Now, it's definitely a good idea. Yeah. Well, I have yes, some. It experience. begins with a structure. You know, having <laughs> yeah. starting a greenhouse doesn't just happen. You, know, you have to have. <laughs> you have to physically have a structure that you can maintain a, a certain temperature range within, and therein uh, that's the first expense. Uh, a hobby greenhouse is a pretty expensive hobby simply because of the amount of cost associated with heating. If you're going to have a greenhouse, you're going to be heating it during the cold weather months. And Mm -hmm. uh, as we know at Bates Nursery, when you you heat an area, it is rather expensive. The gas needs are pretty high. However, I will say that the the major renovations that we made on our greenhouse this year, and uh, no small thanks to Austin because he worked extensively on that, is the double layer and the uh, fans that blow air in between that double layer Mm -hmm. of poly on the roof. And what that does is it creates an insulating barrier. It makes it much easier to heat. Uh, So we were able, honestly, to almost keep our heating costs in line this year with what they were last year, and we're heating a whole lot more area. So I was really pleased to see how that went. We also have double uh, we have framed in walls that are uh, poly on both sides of it. So that creates yet another uh, dead air space, which allows uh, for greater insulating effect. So uh, I'm all, f- I think a, a home greenhouse is a great thing. You just need to consider what it's going to cost to heat that during the winter months. And the beginning portion of it too. I mean, are you gonna, if you're going to build a permanent structure, I mean, there are a lot of kits out there because yours is kind of a kit, wasn't it, Tyler? Okay, well, uh, I have a story. Story yeah. time. Uh, Yay! So I, I <laughs> okay. bought this geodesic uh, structure kit. It was made mm-hmm. out of ABS plastic. Yeah. So it, was, it would be great to support a structure to put some greenhouse plastic on, maybe a vent. Well, that those connectors failed this year. The oh. ABS split at every junction of the of the wood, mm. and at every angle. Um, the creator acknowledged that, and he was offering free replacements. But a replacement just means the same part's going to fail again eventually. 
So he was developing a steel model, but so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to scrap it. So I don't have a greenhouse right now. Uh, but so be mindful of what Careful materials you select to build your greenhouse out of. That's one thing. You might want to also look at treated lumber uh, if you're building one out of wood. Yes. And they have aluminum kits online and in, uh, in like at Harbor Freight that I know that while albeit somewhat flimsy, you could reinforce, bolt into like some kind of foundation that you make, something that you can really tie it in with. Yeah, because the wind is going to catch it, the snow is going to sit on it, the ice is going to sit on it. So you watch your roof, how it's pitched, you know, if you've got a little lean-to. There are a lot of different ways to do it. If you go around to some of the antique shops in Middle Tennessee, you'll see that there are old window sashes that you could use. It. Watch and out for lead paint. You watch might out, wanna... yeah, absolutely watch mm-hmm. out for lead paint, particularly on old windows and doors. But if you, you don't you don't want to put that in the in the environment. Don't sand it. Don't do anything to it. Just scuff it up and put some stuff on it. And put some more paint yeah, that, on top. Yeah, there of is it. one other thing that people mm-hmm. need to be mindful of. Even if you buy a greenhouse quality multi-year poly that you use to cover it with, those generally have a rated life of perhaps four years. You really need to be apprised of the last winter that you're going into and making the decision before that winter arrives to replace that plastic. And it's one of those things that... Photo uh, degradation num- happens, all kinds of different things. It does. And with the numbers of structures that we now have, uh, with that kind of cover on there, is one of the things we're really going to need to track. Uh, in the you know, time passes a lot more quickly than uh, we used to think it did. At least it seems to pass a lot more quickly. It certainly does. Regardless, we're, we'll have a number of covers that are going to be need, needing to be replaced on an ongoing basis. And if you have a home greenhouse that has that same kind, uh, you might look in the same. Now, it might not be a bad idea if it's a smaller home unit to simply get the one-year poly and that Just way you know you need it. to replace it every year, and it's easier to remember that way. Well, speaking of one year, some of these uh, $20 greenhouse kits that simply come with a little shelf that has a kind of a closet of plastic mm-hmm. that goes over it, those won't last more than a season either. I mean, also the, the There's the a reason they're there. $20. Exactly. So mm-hmm. that, that, you do get what you pay for. That poly will, will a melt. A cold frame. Yeah. Just, just no, don't okay, expect Josh, it gotta, to carry you for... Too long, uh, Josh. Too much I've got a question for you now. You know, Tyler mentioned you know treated lumber, or and of course there's the the recycled product, the plastic type of wood. Uh, where do you come down on that? I know you're a lumber sales guy, but that's another product that is offered by many of uh, the manufacturers of greenhouses as a quote permanent solution. So, what's your take on that? Well, there's nothing at all wrong with the product. It's just um, they they primarily you're going to see it used in decking. You can see it in a lot of places. A lot of the garden centers around are having um, Cape Cod chairs made out of it. You see Is that like the Terex deck? Deck board. Uh, Trex would be the Kleenex or the Coca Cola. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of in there. Brand awareness, sorry. Composite decking <laughs> would be the way that go about it. There, there are, we go. There are vinyl types, but you got to keep in mind that it, that stuff is so, not structural. So, so, so you're don't say have, Benadryl, say diphenhydramine. Absolutely. That's what your point is. Yes, or you know, acetaminophen as opposed to Tylenol. Plasticus right. woodicus. Uh, yeah, and you have some that are cap stock that are colored all the way through. You have some that retain their colors better, but it's pretty pricey. And it is, it, the thing is, is that it needs to be permanent for yes. the cost. And it is not structural. So if you're using it maybe as a siding, uh, you might be able to get away with it. But again, if you see it primarily as decking material or railing material, you got to get it tight. So it, the whole point of a greenhouse is, is that you're going to try to keep the cold out. So if you've got decking spacing, you're going to have uh, a crack all the way across the, the, the structure. I'm not a huge fan of the product myself, but it is becoming more and more uh, predominant in the industry for those those applications that they use. It gets really hot. Too. I was about to say uh, it gets it, hot. It, uh, yeah, twice yeah. as hot as wood, just regular wood on a, on a deck. Yeah, and if you go, if mm. you if you ever been to Destin, Florida, down by AJ's, uh, and uh, you walk out there by the pier and you see that uh, that gray expanse. Uh, 
and you walk on it with your flip-flops and you happen to step off a flip-flop and about one o'clock in the afternoon, you'll get, it'll absolutely get your attention. Great product in a lot in the proper application, just like a lot of things. Though. While we're on the, uh, while we're on the greenhouse subject mm-hmm. and, and talking about heating, uh, thermal mass is something you might want to consider. Like if you put your greenhouse as a lean to against like a, mm-hmm. the side of your home, Very that would point. help retain some heat. Also barrels of water, that you could say catch from your gutter, uh, that would be heated by the sun. Those will release heat in the evening as they mm. cool off. And Absolutely. hay bales, you can hay stack bales. up some hay bales against some of the colder sides of your greenhouse. You can actually grow in the hay bales at the same time. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, it, it's a great, great product. So, well, anyway. I think we've covered the greenhouse <laughs> question. So, so no, uh, it's a, starting a greenhouse. We've we've finished at the greenhouse at this point in time. So, the verbal greenhouse. So it's let's move here. along, then, Caroline. <laughs> what what, what other here. questions do we have out there? All right, our next one is: How can I keep bulls away from my apple tree roots? Hmm. Austin, cat. <laughs> uh, yeah, cat. That would. That's a good start. Um, moles or voles? Voles. 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 Oh, okay. And there is, we sell a product for that, do we not? A mole and vole? There is one uh, that we have up in the garden center. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, though. But yes, we do have a product that we sell. I know my cat brings them to me all the time. So. Mm-hmm. My dog will get them sometimes. Uh, they're they're pesky little little creatures, but I don't know how big your apple tree is or if it's a mature one. I'm not sure how much damage they're actually doing to the plant or not. Probably um, got the hostas more a whole lot worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they'll get those a lot. I don't. I just don't see them really, you know, affecting a tree so much unless it's just a very small young tree. I, I guess I could see that. Well, they were specifically talking about the roots of the tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's there's another uh, couple other ways to combat them. Is number one, if you will mulch. You know, voles are particularly bad on things like hosta. They'll yeah. they'll chew them to the ground. But if you or and they'll they'll dig around them and eat the roots uh, where they they'll simply fl- just flop over. Right. But if you'll use a product like uh, Enlighten, which is an Earth Mix brand product, which is expanded shale, and it's very sharp little pieces of shale that has been heated and expanded, so it's porous. Uh, and it cuts their little feet, and they cannot dig oh, in it. Oh, man. that's sad. It does. It's a very, uh, it's a very oh. cruel thing, but uh, <laughs> but it's better than killing them. So and and that's the only other choice. And I don't know why our screen is struggling today. Uh, uh, Josh unplugged. I did. It. It was my the bad. Uh, oh, my bad. Josh. It's the, uh, technical Austin wanted to see a picture, day. and the only way that we can do that is to have. We the have table. a picture today. We have a well. He have a picture of what we were talking so about. So really, it was Austin's fault that things got him. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah, shift the blame. <laughs> Be that as it may, uh, you know, there's that method. You can also buy these uh, rat bait feeders, and, and what they are is a little covered enclosure that has a small hole in it that a cat can't get into, or, or but. Little chipmunks or voles could get in there and chew on the bait that you put in there, and then that is the uh, the uh, lethal uh, solution to it. So if you want to try that route, and those are available at home stores, at co-op, TSC uh, probably has tractor them supply well. company, those kind of places. So you'll be able to find those. But please keep those creatures that are expired out of the environment. Uh, again, if they're inside that cage and that and that rodentage side gets out into the environment whether it's a hawk or a bird or a cat it stays right. inside those systems so i i don't recommend the rodenticides at all outside no. i've heard about this but, actually yeah. lately and uh, owls yep. around my area supposedly right. like, a lot of people are poisoning uh, mice that get in their house and then just kind of i guess throwing them in the yard or whatever they do mm-hmm. and then owls get there are hold sticky of traps also yeah. that mm-hmm. are quite effective Step on those and they're stuck. They and the kind you of get one paw, you get one paw in, <laughs> I don't know and then they get all it. of them in. Right. So I just noticed uh, the interrupt signal on on the Facebook page. But if we could uh, go, yeah, if we could we're, go, we're to, live. Yeah, mm-hmm. if we could go to uh, input two real quick. Uh, now, Austin, Maybe. this is this is the location of Witch Hazel Diana, and if we can go to the uh, to the big screen here. Yeah. Hey, look oh, at look at her. Yeah, okay. uh, that's about three. Uh, it's probably in June after a good clipping in the in the in the in the in the fall in the spring. 
That's great. It in the fall anymore, and the oxalis down below it. I mean, they they love it. So yeah, it's really pretty. Like I was saying, it's kind of got that branchy, bushy habit. Nice layering. Nice mm-hmm. layering. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's got well, beautiful leaves, work, different Josh. little wrinkly leaves. Thank you. I, 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 thank you. Thank you very much. But it, it, the thing about her in the wintertime, she holds her leaves. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago because, I mean, it will hold those leaves and they turn into a deep, leathery brown uh, all the way through. And I stripped off the vast majority of them this year to see if we can see the flowers a little better because mm-hmm. they'll hide up inside. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. Yep. And we were, since we're talking, we're, we're flipping through the Facebook page here. Hey, dee, 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 dee. I, uh, I, while we're back on uh-huh. the uh, the big screen here, and mm-hmm. uh, I have a semblance of control. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, it's a we'll, false uh, sense of security, take, David. Take so. a moment talk about Earthmix products. And you know, if you're really into uh, growing your plants and getting the very best results out of them, but you're not mm-hmm. willing to use chemical means to do so, Earthmix is the only choice you have, and right here in Middle Tennessee, those products are produced, and they're available at independent garden centers all over Middle Tennessee area, Kentucky, even into uh, southern Indiana and Ohio, and those locations can be determined by going to earthmix.net, click on the Find Earthmix tab, which is in this top right corner, and you click on that, and then a map will appear with all of the points Throughout uh, the area that they're uh, available in, you can simply click on those and it'll give you turn by turn directions. Uh, Or you can um, simply go here and try to figure out what kind of product it is that you're looking for. What are you trying to do? And if you're in that ramp up towards vegetable gardening, and who is it this time of year? Mm -hmm. The first product you really ought to be thinking about is Supernatural. Mm -hmm. And As compost products go, uh, Earth Mix Supernatural is um, very different compared to others, uh, simply because it is uh, the formula is replicated time after time after time. So it is not done uh, in whatever uh, byproduct is available at the time. The exact same amounts of the exact same inputs are used each time, and additionally. Uh, things such as mycorrhiza fungi, both endo and ecto, Ooh, and yeah, humic acid are added mm. to really boost its already nutritious blend of ingredients. And you're assured of getting uh, a vegetable crop that will be second to none. This is a great thing to do, even if you have added uh, other things like earth mix garden in, uh, in the past. You might want to supercharge it a little bit and add some back to it. So... Think of Earthmix Supernatural or the entire line of Earthmix products. Simply mm-hmm. check those out by going to the products link uh, at earthmix.net. And remember this, success in gardening does indeed begin at the ground level. When you use Earthmix garden products, and our screen has, a, again, gone away. I didn't do it. I, I, Josh? Did, I did not do it. I didn't touch anything. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, we're all suspicious, Josh. Uh, yes, we are. David, you might have to select the airplay. Yeah, and I'm trying to uh, get that to come up here. And, and while he's saying uh, that, let's get another I've question. Spread, oh, oh no, yeah, sorry. Well, no, we. I want to. <laughs> you do you, Tyler. I'm going to jump on the Earth Mix train here and just say I spread some supernatural uh, about three weeks ago on my raised bed, and I built a little cold frame for it. Yep. I built a stupid cold frame because it catches water and it does not drain, (laughs) but it works. So is that stupid with regard to the frame or the constructor? No, the the frame is very well built. It's holding up. It's definitely the constructor that didn't consider maybe a curved top instead of a square top would be better for shedding rain. You know, I made a cube essentially. Yeah. Anyway, so I sewed some lettuce in it and they're coming up and looking good already. So... Got Excellent. some cool. very early stuff growing in the garden. Proud of you, Tyler. Thanks. Get it. <laughs> All right. right. All right, let's there you go. go. Let's move right along then and uh, get back. And thanks for giving us a moment to talk about that. Uh-huh. What you got next, Caroline? I got a really fun one. Um, I deal with this one a lot up in the garden center with the house plants. It just says, <laughs> keep the fiddle fig alive. So oh. they're talking about the, <laughs> the mm. fiddle leaf fig, uh, the Lyrata ficus. I would say that's one of our most um, talked about plants up in the house plant garden center area. A lot of people have trouble with them. Um, I always say just pick a spot that gets bright, uh, filtered light, 
put it there and walk away. Don't even look at it. Don't talk to it. <laughs> don't water it for like a week and a half, two weeks. Um, they like to really dry out in between waterings. That is a plant that you can overly love very quickly. And they do take time to acclimate to their new home. They can take up to like three, three and a half months to get used to their new space, their new environment. So they can be a little bit troublesome, a little bit sassy, uh, but it is worth it. I've had two that I've had for years and I've actually tried to kill them. They just won't die. Uh. Um, <laughs> and I was just trying to kill them by ignoring them. So clearly yeah. ignoring them, not giving them too much attention, too much water. They're loners. The right they, are loners. They, are loners. they are loners. They are beautiful well, loners. And the big, the big difficulty for them is the fact that people misinterpret what the plant is saying to them. That is <laughs> that when they see leaves around the bottom uh, begin to drop off or the tips of the leaves that remain on there start to turn brown, it's common that people misinterpret that as it, the plant saying I'm dry when really what the plant's saying is I'm wet and this is what it looks like when I'm wet. So... If you see the bottom leaves of a fiddle leaf fig dropping off or the ends uh -huh. and the ends turning brown, that means please back off on your watering. Stop watering it until it gets dry. They also, they're not a great low light plant. A lot of people have got them and don't really have enough natural sunlight. It may be necessary to add some kind of a grow light bulb. And you, if you look at the top of the screen there, you see these little clamp on fixtures like we've got in here. Mm -hmm. Let's look right up, Josh, you oh. know, right up there. Yeah. Oh, anyway, there it yeah. is. Anyway, um, if you Blind. use that, you use that in conjunction with a, and by the way, all those are those little silver ones that are available at home stores and not just spray painted them black. So they, they look fairly attractive, and you can discreetly put them in place and add some light to a spot that might not have enough otherwise. So and, and there's my take on that. Yep. Yeah, and that's the – I think you hit it. it people want to use fiddle leaf figs as, like, furniture. I mean, they're so pretty, and they look so good in your home that you want to put them in, like, a dark corner or, like, you know, somewhere to kind of, you know, lighten up your house and make it make it look better um, aesthetically. But if you're not giving that plant plenty of light, then, then you're, you're already starting off bad. And like you said, if you do want to use it as, as a piece that just looks good in your home, mm -hmm. you know, setting up a couple lights, even something maybe below a light below shining upward through it Ooh, could be classy. a cool little effect. Yeah. So yeah. Just and there's always sure. fake ones that look great. If you have a corner <laughs> that doesn't get a lot of light. Um, I actually am on a plant page on Facebook and somebody put a question up that they had this great looking fiddle leaf fig that they'd had for about two years. They watered it and it just wasn't growing. Mm -hmm. Looked fantastic. Turns out the plant was fake. People oh, were no. like, take the, pot, <laughs> take the plant out of the pot, look at the roots. And they were like, oh, I've been watering a fake plant. But they couldn't even tell. They put a photo up and it's a plant page with a lot of, um, you know, plant people that know what they're looking at and people couldn't tell uh, until they pulled the, the plant I will admit the that the artificial plants do, they've come a long way in the last years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that they definitely do look a lot more realistic. However, you don't get the benefits that you get when you have an actual living plant in there is that they clean the air yes. really well. So all of the things that, everything we buy has some kind of gassing off of the byproducts of what they're made of. And those can be trichlor, trichloroethylene and all other kinds of chemical names that are have too many letters in them. Uh, those things get absorbed by the plants and it really scrubs the air better than any other kind of filtration system. So as nice as a fake plant may look and be easy to maintain that you don't get the benefit that you would get out of using a living plant. Also, be mindful when you're buying plants in a greenhouse like we have here at Bates Nursery, and you'll see elsewhere, it's a pretty bright environment. Yes. And if you're unable to somewhat simulate that, you need to be thinking about, you know, maybe this is not my best choice. So you need a really bright window for that to be nearby, to have a, uh, an opportunity for it to do well. And you got to remember to turn it if it's in front of a window because you don't want one side getting all of the light and the other side not getting any. So. Mm -hmm. Also, this time of year, humidity levels. Our humidity levels are very high inside the greenhouse right now when it's so cold outside and so warm inside that you get a lot of moisture in the air, which they really like, too. So when you take this home, you know, this time of year, your house is really dry compared to our greenhouse. So 
it will right. probably stress within the first two or three, four weeks of you having it. You might or notice some leaf drop from the interior. Um, so misting, uh, whenever you first bring it home or maybe a bathroom window, um, something like that to kind of replicate humidity, it, they're going to need it because that dry air is going to kind of make them drop. Citrus is another one that is very, very prone to that. So know that if you're, we just got a nice shipment of citrus trees in. Uh, oh, Caroline just got them there. Lemons did. and oranges and limes. Calamondins. Um, Calamondins. Yeah, Tyler what? and I were looking Loquats. at that one. Loquats. Loquats. Loquat. Yes, we uh, got all sorts of fruit right now. But those things really, really need humidity. And so when you bring them in your home, just expect a little bit of leaf loss. It's probably going to happen. It's not necessarily right. your fault. It's your. It's just our, our temperature. So just stick with them, get them through, and then once spring rolls around, we can get those things outside and actually get them up and growing. Right. Now and when you got... say humidity, we're not talking about watering. No. And no. I just want to reiterate, they like to stay dry I didn't water one of my fiddle leaves at yeah. all last winter, and it pushed due growth. So mm -hmm. I gave it a about two and a half months. A home humidifier is a great investment for anybody who really is a plant enthusiast and yeah. to keep that running throughout the winter to simply offset some of the humidity that is lost during the heating process. So we run humidifiers all the time and at our home, and the plants really respond well. So just be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. And you have some beautiful ones for inside the house in front of you, Caroline. Yes, Whatever. they do. Oh, what have we this got? This is an awesome display. Yes, this week. It it's is. a white thing. Thank you. Who did that? Caroline did yes. all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just I was proud of this one. Um, <laughs> I actually have a ficus on either side of Austin and I. It is a Teneki ficus, a uh, variegated rubber tree. I'll tilt it this way. So I went with kind of a variegated theme today. Most of the plants are white and green, but this one has a nice little uh, red leaf coming out of the top. So their new growth is red. As it matures, it's going to turn white and lose that red. It just keeps um, that pinkish red color in the vein of the leaf. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favorites. I've had one forever. A little bit finicky, as all ficus tend to be. Um, <laughs> but I love mine. It's about four feet tall now. And then right here in front of me is a fatsia spider web. So it's got this great... Uh, variegation, these ni nice white leaves. Gorgeous. As it matures, it'll turn a little bit more green. It'll lose the white. It'll still have the variegation. It's just not going to be um, as bright and, you know, you exciting. See this one. Yes. Look at this. Total green You know, leaf. and that's a plant that if it is almost, and it's not quite, but it's almost a hardy plant. You know, it'll... it'll. It's so close. 10 degrees, I think. It's yes. right at it, so, yeah. So you could, if you gave it some extra protection or it had a really... Uh, spot that you kept uh, monitored closely and were able to uh -huh. cover it during cold nights, it might actually make it in the landscape. And it does do well in a mottled light. If you had it in heavy shade, obviously the variegation is going to uh, be attenuated, but it's a beautiful plant. I do love fatsias. They're a great plant, and they're easy to grow. They mm -hmm. are. I love them. Um, the first time I saw it, I think I was in South Carolina, and they were just going crazy under tree canopies where mm -hmm. they get a lot of filtered light, um, not a ton of direct sunlight, and they were amazing. How tall do they get? They can get, uh, I, I think in your home, they can get up to like four feet. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They get tall. They Their don't leaf just size, stay. too, gets pretty big. Yeah, they yeah. get huge. I had one in my home for a couple years that probably got up to about two and a half, three feet. Uh, then I made the mistake of putting it on my porch and forgetting about it. Oops. Mm -hmm. And if they dry out as a house plant, um, if they dry out completely, it's they're pretty much gone. Once you yeah, water you them, just that shock of going from dry to wet just kills them within a few hours. It's Tyler, can you kind pull, of insane. Yeah, can you pull back and show that whole spray? And can we get how far back can we get on that? Uh, oh. Are uh, you talking about the uh, the spill out the front? The spray mm -hmm. spill. Oh, wow. I can lift that up. Yeah, no. just lift it up. Okay, so it's this just, is <laughs> One folks. thing that we got in this week, uh enjoy pothos. Can you raise it up even higher? Keep going. Whoa. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Wow. So, uh this is uh, this is one of my favorite pothos. It's a slower growing one. If you've grown them before, which most people have. Sorry, I got away from my mic for a second. Um, you'll know they grow fairly quickly depending on um, what light they're getting, how often you're watering and fertilizing. These tend to be a slower grower um, when it comes to pothos. So one of the slowest ones. And when we got these hanging baskets in, I was so excited. <laughs> I haven't seen any um, with tendrils this long ever. So we do have quite a few up in the garden center right now. 
So come out, come out and look at also, them, and maybe buy about, one. Talk about the stems there. We've got some. Uh, what do we call this? Adventitious roots. <laughs> they will literally <laughs> root. Uh -oh. Look at oh, you yeah. go. I mean, you could take little sections of that the whole way down. Even this stem right here, up underneath that node, y'all. There's a little root that's starting. You can take a division of that. Prop it. You could and you have got so more. many one more. Plant and make a hundred. Oh, easy. Yeah. I mean, yes, so out of can. a plant this big, yeah, you could easy get a hundred new plants out of that. So something fun to do, especially this time of year, whenever we're all gearing up for spring, but it's not there yet. So let's prop some, get so them going, and here. they'll be ready. And Austin the, has a couple of webinars also on propagation. Right. Mm. Ooh, he, even, he even does, uh, what was it? Was it air layering? Air did layering. you do that? I did a little, you know, little demo. A little something. <laughs> yeah, a little something. The man's yeah. wild. Yeah, <laughs> I do love propagation. One of the one of my favorite aspects of horticulture, and then, uh, things from seed, things from cuttings, things from mm -hmm. air layering, any of it. It's all fascinating to me. And those you don't even have to do anything. They just literally grow, and then they'll put a root out, oh, which is yeah. amazing. It's, Most things need well, at least are, like soil content. Yeah, there are things like winter jasmine is yeah. another one of those things that is, has low arching branches mm -hmm. that tend to touch the ground, and you can literally just go out and clip and dig them out and transplant them somewhere else because of the, the branches make contact with the soil. And that's really what air layering does is that you, you wound a, a, a trunk uh, of a plant at a spot where there's a leaf bud coming out and wrap it in moss and aluminum foil or maybe even saran wrap, something like that. Now, there's another brand name, by the way. <laughs> um, Costco. Uh, yeah. Yes. That, uh, That'll be $10,000. It will induce root growth on there, and once you get the roots growing, right. then you cut it off and plant it. And uh, it, it really takes a, all the loss out of uh, propagation. Uh, you know, it's a, generally a pretty high loss rate, particularly on some kinds of things. If you were trying to propagate, say, for instance, a crepe myrtle or a uh, southern magnolia, they're both very difficult to root. Uh, an air layering technique might be your better way to go. Mm -hmm. Hey, and speaking of Magnolia, uh, we just got a question related to the Fatsia on Facebook. You like that? Yeah. Alexander Foxia. said, you said filtered light. Would that work under a Magnolia tree for growing Fatsia? Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe not. Uh, well, yeah, we were talking about how we can go down to 10 degrees here. I don't know where. Alexandria, you live? Alexander. 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 <laughs> <laughs> also, I would it say if, if it happened to be Birmingham South, probably so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, magnolias do create a exactly. ton of shade, though, too. So if it's a very right. large magnolia, their canopy can be quite dense. So not a lot of light gets down there. You still want a little bit of light, uh, but you may observe it in the spring and just see how much light, it, it, you know, actual filtered light it's actually getting. Because if it's deep, dark, heavy shade, uh, probably... Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. So am hey I? Guys, just, oh. Let's change gears for just a moment here. And we'll come back to our questions. <laughs> okay, we are in gear. Yeah, yeah, use the clutch, Josh. <laughs> uh, we uh, talk about Bates Nursery and Garden Center. That's where yep. we are today and uh, every day. And because we don't really do anything else, you know, we yeah. we do horticulture 365 days a year. And the staff that I've been fortunate to uh, have working. Um, with you and with me here, uh, we've got the the whole spectrum of expertise covered. And uh, Austin and Carrie and Tyler are all great examples of that. And we have a whole staff of other folks that you don't get to see as regularly unless you come out and see us. And we want to encourage you to do that. Today is uh, on a Saturday. We're only open from 10 until 2, but we yep. are open from 10 until 2. Yes. So come on out and see us. We're still closed on Sundays, but soon that will change as spring so slowly but steadily arrives. Uh, we're open from 9 until 4, Monday through Friday, in addition to Saturday. So what we have is uh, the most extensive selection of plant material anywhere, anywhere. Anyway. Not just Middle Tennessee, anywhere. And right now it all appears that to be indoors because it is indoors. But we're in the process of getting ready to start moving that out. So quickly we will appear again to be a uh, nursery that has plants growing on the outside. But there's nothing to stop you from shopping those today. We've got them inside in our newly renovated uh, structures that really make for easy shopping. It's a, a look at old pictures from uh, just a year ago in our uh, winterizing house and it's 
it is literally uh, day and night different because uh, you can see really well in there now, and it's a great environment for shopping, regardless of the weather conditions. So come on out and see that. You know, we're always working on facilities here at Bates Nursery. We've been blessed to be in business for 90 years, but what that means is, is that well, our facilities need work. So we are working on that in process. We're, uh, we are updating our shade area. So if you come out, you'll see there are a lot of uh, six by six posts uh, coming out of the ground. And we want to thank Carlson Builder Supply for being our official lumber supplier mm-hmm. of Bates Nursery and Garden Center. So those are going in, a lot going on. We're here to help you. We're easy to find. We're located a mile north of Briley Parkway at exit 19 on White's Creek Pike. That's just minutes from Rivergate, Opry Mills, Nashville West, downtown Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, it's worth the drive from anywhere. Uh, We have a selection of containers that is unrivaled in Middle Tennessee. And we have uh, the expertise, Carrie and others, to help you grow the plants in there. And we also have the best soils on the planet, and that's the Earth Mix Garden products. And if you're going to be planting indoor plants in new containers, you're going to want to use Proganics Eye. We're uh, really uh, fortunate to get to offer that for you and know that it's going to give you the results you're looking for. So come out and see us. Check out our website, BatesNursery.com. If you'll scroll down that page there, you'll see that there is a newsletter link right there. Yep. I write a weekly newsletter, put your name, email address, and agree to be emailed. Because <gasps> if you don't do that, I won't email you. But what <laughs> what you get for that is you, <laughs> you get uh, my latest thoughts, and I try to talk about timely things and also whatever happens to be on my mind. So that's at BatesNursery.com. And, of course, the efforts where uh, – where Tyler, Austin, and Carrie all are heavily involved is the Bates Nursery Botanical Boot Camp portion of the mm-hmm. page. They there's we have over seventy long form videos that really do a deep dive into whatever topics we're talking about. So if you're looking for something to really give you some in depth information, it is worth uh, your time to do that. And we're looking forward to uh, getting more of that content put out soon. So yep. come see us at Bates Nursery, 10 to 2 today, and um, 9 to 4, here. Monday through Friday. It's absolutely worth the drive from everywhere. And the, the capital improvement project is interesting to watch, and you're going to have to wait and see what it's going to be. Oh, it and looks nuts should, right it, now. It, it's crazy, but I mean, <laughs> David, how are you propagating those 6 by 6s I mean, are you using well, which, which, which one of the earth next the are we putting uh, around them? Is it that concrete it's, version? It, uh, that They are being concreted in there, uh, uh-huh. you know, feet down into the ground. Yeah. And I saw Roger putting a little structure. growth hormone on it before he stuck it in the ground. <laughs> a little, little, little rooting hormone? Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah, he's got a giant bucket. He just gets the boys to dip it in. And then... Okay. <laughs> so That's how we yeah, do it so around that, here. So that's coming along, and, you know, um, the good thing about Roger is he says, I need to eat, so we work rain or shine. So that's going to get tested this coming week with the amount of rainfall that's in the forecast. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, he'll be hanging out with us this weekend. That's what he told me. Uh, quickly, can we go back to input, too? And then I'm going to show something else about the witch hazel, Diane. I know we got a little bit of a... Input two will do. Here we come. Input two. <laughs> this is the color of the bloom. Uh, on on oh. the witch hazel Diana and just absolutely gorgeous and you could see that that uh, that leathery uh, dark leaf that hangs with them this year I mean they're just absolutely gorgeous and they're little bitty flowers but they're all over the thing man mm-hmm. they're gorgeous I'm glad you stripped the leaves this year because your show will be a lot better yep yep but uh-huh. the, we've but, got one in our greenhouse right now that I, I believe it's sold it might be for sale we might have one left but uh-huh. there is one that's blooming like crazy in our in our house right now uh-huh. I noticed it yesterday so. And, and they're delicate little it. tiny little flowers. It's mm-hmm. really the first harbinger of spring at the Proving Grounds. Yeah, they just kind of bust out of there, just kind of unfurl from that. It's a, it's definitely a, a, a cool plant. Not a lot of people it grow it. I've always wanted it's one. Right. Don't have one yet. Oh, by the way, it's Alexander it. followed up with Clarksville as his location. Oh, so oh probably, probably a little, little bit too north. cold. I'm pretty close to Clarksville, and I'd say <clears throat> it's like 10 degrees colder out there than it is in Nashville for me. So. Mm-hmm. Risky. Maybe a little too risky, but you can always try it. But look, there's plenty 
of perennial options yep. that are variegated white and green. I mean, we've, we've got that, too, that will certainly live up underneath a magnolia tree. I mean, hosta comes to mind. I know hosta's mm. kind of, mm-hmm. you know, everybody's got them. They've been around a long time. But, but they keep so coming out with new I varieties. I know, and they're plenty hardy. Now, you don't have to a, do anything. Here's a question I've got for you, Austin. Mm. Did, has anybody, have you ever seen a white and green variegated Akuba or the only gold? Ooh. I've never, I have not seen white yet, mm. no. Now, that would be... Cool. We would sell a lot more of them, I think. I, I like white variegated things more so than I do that kind of creamy yellow. Um, mm. But it seems like yellow is easier to achieve with a Cuba because I have not seen any white splashed a Cuba yet, although I'm sure they're working on it. Depending upon the variety of magnolia, could he limb up from the ground and get and raise that canopy a little bit? To get, Certainly. Yeah. It doesn't even matter what variety it is. Right. I mean, with a larger growing magnolia, you can always limb them up. It's a, it's a practice of a lot of stuff. So a lot of people like to see them leafed all the way to the ground. That's right. fine, too. But if you need to limb it up to, to get more light up underneath that canopy, then it, certainly you can do that. Very good. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to get to a couple more questions. Okay. Yeah, we probably Especially, have a few, huh? We do. We have quite a few today. Um, <laughs> we do have a follow-up question from last week from Miriam about the Hey, crepe. Miriam. Hello. Good morning, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Uh, regarding her crepe myrtle, which she says, crepe murder, which uh. I love. <laughs> Is it really necessary to cut them back? And if so, how much? It is not at all necessary to cut back a crepe, crepe myrtle. It's just not. You can crepe let them be a tree um, all you want to. It's most of the time we have to cut them back because people put them really close to their homes and they, right. they get obstructive. Um, so, no, Miriam, if you want to let that thing be and just let it be a pretty tree, do it. Uh, and don't, don't you agree, Austin, that the, the biggest problems associated with crepe myrtle is failure to understand just how big a particular cultivar is going to get and where you're, you're putting it in the landscape. And you alluded to that. You don't ever want to plant a Natchez like right up against the house. You know, they're, they are a tree. And if Most you're going definitely. to use that in your landscape, I have one in my home. I planted mine about eight feet away. I should have gone 12. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you know, they're as big as it was, when, even when I transplanted it, and I know how big it's going to get, I still let it get too close. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's one of those things that uh, you need to do your homework on. You need to believe what the, uh, the ultimate size of those is going to be. So uh, while the uh, Natchez is on the, the top end as far as how big it grows, there are, there are intermediate types and also – legitimate ground cover type so yep. know your crepe myrtle and place it in the right spot so that you don't have to uh to make that decision should i trim it or not they really look a lot better if you can keep them natural yeah, yeah. could I miriam agree. tell us what color her uh blooms are that might help us decide what what variety maybe that's still going to be tricky, yeah, tricky. Okay. yeah uh i mean if it is white we we, we could probably determine maybe which ones it's going to be but uh, it's a lot of the pinks it's going to be tricky because there's so many of them Right. Yeah, um, and one of the things, even if you're, I had, I've got Natchez on a, a a median strip. I'll say it's, it's between the sidewalk and the street, and they're they're under some very tall power lines. But but even at that, they they have now have gotten where they're getting up into them. So every few years now, we have to go through and selectively prune those. Now. The most common method is just to simply whack it all off even, and and that's what the term is the term of endearment crepe murder comes from because they premeditated. Uh, oh, it murder. looks awful, <laughs> and, and you, you 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 should not ever do that. But uh, if you will trim it back to where it is in its normal form, where that it will look ha- having a similar shape, then you can do that. And it looks really good. We have to go in there and cut it back and kind of sh- round it a bit and mm-hmm. go in there and selectively thin out some of the branching to, so it can uh, maintain a more normal growth habit. And we did that to ours last year. And they look as com- completely normal. You will, you'd never know they had been throttled back some. And if you've got them in a spot like I've got mine, if you don't do it, the power company will do it, and mm-hmm. yeah. that's not uh, it's not what you want to have. That's called landscape aside. Yeah. That's what that's called. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, right. oh, hello. there's so. your <laughs> well, <laughs> I, <was> looking, <laughs> I surprised you. <laughs> looking at questions, um, let's get one more out there. So let's see, leaves falling off all my unanimous after all the frost goners. Well, no, are the, they gone? 
Do you know about yeah, that support you, group, David? That they used to yeah, talk you got to be there's there's a unanimous anonymous group out there <laughs> for people who are, are uh, have a fixation on them. But that's a different program oh, for a different oh, time. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. But Euonymous does that 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 does happen to Euonymous, y'all. Sometimes, especially on the topmost growth, uh, it can go this kind of ugly white cast on the very top most part of the leaves i don't know how old your plants are if they're if they're brand new and you're starting to see that damage uh, it potentially could be lost um, but don't do anything right now let it be let it see if it flushes in the spring what you can do is trim back all that all that nasty um, burn that's on top that happened with this cold weather and then you'll see a response out of that hopefully in the spring especially with mature euonymus mature euonymus are not going to die um, with a little bit of that die back from the winter time so um, just stick it out wait till spring let's see what happens don't do anything yet yeah the other side of that is is that euonymus that are beginning to push new growth and this is not just euonymus this applies to things like southern magnolia when that new growth starts to push the plant is calling for energy at those leaves that need it most so there is a price to be paid for that and that means discarding a foliage that is lower down that is not receiving the amount of light so the plant will simply be rid of them because they are a liability not a uh, asset to the plant so uh, that's very normal also so don't react to seeing that when you see those interior low down leaves drop off on Broadleaf evergreens, it's very common to mm-hmm. see for that to occur. And Euonymus is especially is very, very vigorous, y'all. So if you do mm-hmm. see leaf loss now, just wait. It, it'll it'll bust back, I'm almost certain. Quickly. Mm-hmm. Quickly. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, all right. Oh, what else you oh, got, Caroline? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I lost it. Hold, oh. please. Here we go. My cacti have grown appendages. Can <gasps> I cut them off? Caroline and question. Plant. Yes, I, I love cacti. They're the best. Uh, absolutely, you can. Um, most cacti, once they start growing arms, you can even chop the top off. Take a clean cutting. Um, I always suggest using a sterile knife just so you're not giving it something. Um, let it callus over like in a dark, cool place for about two weeks. You don't want to stick it directly in soil, perlite, whatever you're trying to prop it in because it mm-hmm. will cause root rot if it doesn't callus. Um, I really just stick mine in a cactus soil and just leave it alone, put it in a window where it's getting some sunlight, water at once, walk away. They do take some time. Um, some will root quickly, more quickly than others, but they are super easy to propagate. Um, wherever you take that cutting, it'll callus over on your mother plant, and sometimes it will grow um, new little arms, and then you'll have even more new plants if you want to cut those. So yeah, go ahead and cut them if you'd like, let them dry and then stick them in a pot. You know, cacti and succulents are very counterintuitive compared to all other forms of plants that you were propagating that you have to do what you're talking about is to allow them to air dry and callus over uh, before you put them back in the soil because they will most certainly rot if you fail to do that. So it's right. uh, you know, uh, cacti are storehouses of water. You know, and that's, If you see them in the desert in pictures uh, in times at different times of year, uh, they will swell up greatly when they have gotten rainfall, and then they will shrink tremendously otherwise. So they can tremendously uh, store a lot of water, and you've got to let them have a chance to callus off uh, so that that will give them a really good spot to be able to form roots once you plant them into the ground. So right. as They're you so said, cool. I, Semi-shade area is probably a good spot for that. Now, we actually had a, a question last week that we didn't get to as well. They were talking about yucca plants and it, it, limbing up and trimming a yucca. That doesn't sound like it would be a really great idea to me. I wish people... Okay, I, I, I got to talk about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So, yeah. old yucca <laughs> plants. Easy, minutes, man. Austin, so yeah, okay. all right. <laughs> So most of the time, yucca stays pretty low to the ground, and you don't really have to do anything to it. It's just a nice evergreen that's kind of got that southwestern feel to it. It adds to a nice landscape. Mm-hmm. You can be used as singular plantings. Uh, looks good with rock, all of that. But there are old yucca that have been planted around um, and that I notice that I drive by. And what I see is is this tall yucca. It ends up being almost like tree form. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it'll have this stem that'll come up to its foliage that's atop. What people don't do is they don't they don't take off the lower leaves. Those lower leaves have turned really? brown. They mm-hmm. lay down. They don't look good. Remove those lower leaves just to present the green leaves up top, and what you've got is this sweet-looking tree form yucca. Looks like a little Joshua tree down in Southern California um, that adds a cool element to your landscape. It's just for some reason people don't do that. They leave those, those leaves on the plant. Oh. Um, so... 
If you're like me, I mean, I like to take those things off. Just strip them. Like I said, yucca grows slow, so it's going to be a while before you get that. But if you do have an upright yucca that's a little bit taller, strip those lower leaves that are brown and see what you get. Sometimes whenever you strip those lower leaves and you ex- Flush expose a stem, you might see another little arm break off of that, right. uh, which would really be cool. So, now, What about the bloom stalk on a yucca? Now, the, 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 stick that, the stalk that comes up through the middle should would it be pruned out every year? Uh, after it's done, okay. I, I think it's fairly ugly. I mean, it'll, it'll produce what? seed. Okay. No, not the bloom. The blooms are gorgeous on yucca, yeah, but once are. it fades, <laughs> okay. I'm saying. All once right. it fades, it goes It's really to woody. Yeah, it they're... gets very woody. It's kind of hard to chop, and it, it produces its seed. If you want to collect seed from it, let those dry on the plant, and then collect your seed from that, and then simply cut oh. that stalk back. So. And I th- I, I, don't they make the rain tubes, you know, the ones that you can buy that you know, kind of have a shaky kind of a feel out of, the, out of that? Maybe, because there's, their seeds are in, like, pods. It may be, like, the shaky... Is that what you're talking about? Like rain sticks. Rain I sticks. Think. Oh, rain sticks. Oh, oh, I know. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of rain sticks, we got rain coming up this week, folks. Oh, so we got some aware rain. of that. And uh, we've, I don't know if we got through all the questions or not, Caroline, but we have run out of time. Mm-hmm. We, we can answer them for... on our Instagram page. If yes, you... we will. We will answer them on Instagram and we will talk about them next week, whatever we also, didn't answer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll try to text. You're uh, not. Try to go through the different feeds that come through on the show that are broadcasting it. Hey, ah, folks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a bunch of feeds. We got to get, we gotta get to them, a Ooh, lot of them. So, I'm, but folks, I'm we appreciate Poppy. You're feeling poppy. Okay. Well, folks, we appreciate you being here this Saturday morning. We encourage you to join us again next Saturday morning from the Green Room Studios here at Bates Nursery and Garden Center for the entire at-home show cast. We thank you for being here, and we'll see you next week.